Hi, welcome back. We have come a long way. This is the 12th tutorial in this lecture series. The idea is to discuss all important logical reasoning problem types here. Today, we are going to discuss a problem based on floors of a multi-storied building. Not a difficult type to handle, but practicing a few problems would definitely make you feel comfortable at the time of the exam. So let's go to the problem now and see how the problems based on this kind of setup are handled neatly, confidently and elegantly. This question mentions seven friends who have taken an office each in the same building. This building has got five floors that are numbered from one to five. Each floor has got office of at least one of the seven friends. Now with the help of the six statements given in the question, we need to figure out the occupants of each floor of the building. I would advise you to pause the video here for some time at this stage and attempt the question. Resume the video once you are done with it. Let's try and solve the question now. The first step of solving this problem would be to make a table like this. As you can see, it has got three columns. The first is floor numbers. The second is the number of offices on a particular floor and third is the names of the persons who have got offices on a particular floor. To start with, let's quickly fill this first column up, which is floor numbers. You must have noticed here that we have numbered it in the reverse order. So generally in a table, we would number from 1 to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But here we have numbered it like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The reason I think would be obvious. This has been done in order to simulate the structure of a building. So the first floor would be at the lowest level, then the second, then third, fourth and fifth. So that kind of helps in visualizing the building. I hope this is understood. Let's move forward and look at statement 6 now. It says that the number of friends with office above Zach's floor is the same as that below Zach's floor. You also need to remember that no floor in this building has got more than two offices. So Zach's floor may have one or two offices. So let's for a moment assume that Zach's floor has got two offices, one of which would be his own office and one of some other friend. So in that case, the number of friends who have got offices in the building but not on Zach's floor would be 7 minus 2 divided by 2, which gives us 2.5. So 2.5 friends above Zach's floor and 2.5 friends below Zach's floor. But this is not possible. It means that the assumption was incorrect. So Zach's floor would not have two offices. So if it's not two, it has to be just one office. So in this case, the number of friends who have got an office in this building but who are not on Zach's floor would be 7 minus 1 divided by 2, which gives us 3. So it would basically mean that there are 3 friends who have got an office above Zach's floor and there are 3 friends who have got an office below Zach's floor. Now look at this number 3. Can the offices of 3 persons be accommodated on a single floor? As per the condition given in statement 4, no. It means that these 3 people would require at least 2 floors. So two floors above Zach's floor and two floors below Zach's floor. It means that Zach has to be at floor number 3. I hope this is clear. Let's move forward and look at statement 3 now. It says that the offices of Sam and Omi are on the same floor and that is immediately above Leo's floor. So we can depict it like this. Now recall statement 4 which says that no floor has got more than two offices. It means that the floor on which Sam and Omi's offices are located has got just these two offices and no other. So let's write 2 here. And recall this, Zach's friends have to appear in groups of 3 now. So now since Sam and Omi are together, Leo's office has to be the only office on his floor because that makes it 3 offices then. So let's put 1 here. So now this is one block of 3 people. Sam, Omi and Leo. Sam and Omi on one floor and Leo on the floor just below theirs. Let's leave it like that and look at statement 5 now. It says that Rio's office is immediately above that of Pat. So it can be depicted like this. Let's leave it like this and concentrate on the upper block first. Now this is a block of two floors and three persons offices. 
If we look at the table, it can be adjusted at two places, either at floor numbers 1 and 2 or at floor numbers 4 and 5. So we'll basically need to divide the situation into two cases. Let's call them case 1 and case 2 and put this block into these two cases like this. So in case 1, Sam and Omi are on floor 5 and Leo on floor 4. And in case 2, Sam and Omi are on floor 2 and Leo on floor 1. Let's go to the Rio and Pat block now. This again can be adjusted in both the cases. Let's do it. So in case 1, Rio is on floor 2 and Pat on floor 1. And in case 2, Rio on floor 5 and Pat on floor 4. So these are the two parallel cases now. Let's move forward and go to statement 2 now. The only person to be put in the table now is Tom. And this statement says that Tom's office is on an odd numbered floor. We can clearly see that in case 1, Tom can be put either on floor number 1 or floor number 2. That's because floor numbers 4 and 5 together have got 3 offices, where 1 and 2 together have just got 2 offices as of now. So the odd number here is 1. So Tom's office would be on floor number 1. So let's put Tom's name beside Pat. So it's clear now. Floor number 1 has got 2 offices, those of Tom and Pat. Whereas floor number 2 would have just one office, that of Rio. Likewise, if we look at case 2, Tom's office has to be either at floor number 4 or floor number 5. But since 5 is the odd number we are looking for, Tom's office has to be at floor number 5 only. So let's put Tom's name beside Rio. Now floor number 5 has got two offices and floor number 4 has got just one office, that of Pat. Now if you realize that, we have filled both of these tables completely. But only one of them has to be correct. We'll figure that out with the help of statement 1 now. It states that the number of friends with office on floor 5 is different from that on floor 2. Look at case 2. There are two offices on floor 5 and two offices on floor 2. So this basically violates the condition given in statement 1. It says that these two numbers have to be different but it's the same number, 2. So it means that this case is not possible. And so the arrangement given in case 1 has to be correct. And then that becomes our answer to the question. We could handle it quite comfortably in the end. So that's how we deal with all such problems. In the next tutorial, I'll go back to tabular arrangement problems once more and discuss a question that will have more data than we have dealt with in any question previously, which makes it more challenging. The way we start tabulating the data would become absolutely vital in a situation like this. I'll see you soon. Goodbye until then.